This is Ray Glasser speaking in December of 2023 with a video of my 25th car. Yep, this is the 25th car I've owned since 1968, and ironically, I bought it on the 25th day of October in 2023. This is the newest car I've ever owned, the most expensive car I've ever owned, the best engineered car I've ever had, and the most high-tech car I've ever owned in my life. This car is virtually a computer on wheels. It has tons of safety features, and it even talks. Now, I have the Upscale Premium 2 trim level, which is the highest trim level, with the 20-inch tires and every option offered except for the panoramic sunroof, which I wouldn't use anyway. Now, the original list price of this car in 2015 was $44,000. Now, while doing my research, I found out that this LaCrosse replaced the former Buick Lucerne, which replaced the original Buick Park Avenue and the Sabre. And this wound up being Buick's last full-size luxury sedan. They no longer make this car in the States, but they are bringing back this car in China in 2024. And apparently the Chinese love these big luxury cars. This was the first time I shot a car video in 4K and parts of the video were shot on my cell phone. I'll be mixing in some still pictures as well. I spent five months researching this car, watched lots of YouTube videos, and I even downloaded the owner's manual so I would know how this car works. I actually test drove one of these back in 2010 or so, and I was very impressed with a smooth, solid, big car ride. That being said, I mainly bought this car for the ride. It's as wonderful as I remember Buicks of years gone by. And for as big and heavy as this car is, it has lots of power and it handles like a sports car. This is the first car I've ever owned with a push-button start. No more fumbling around inside your pockets to get out your keys and no more looking for the damn ignition on the steering column. I just love this. And this is also the first car I've ever owned with a remote start. This is also the first car I've ever had with a vibrating seat. And as expected, this car has great heat and great air conditioning. Now, this car also offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it is a pretty modern car. And this car also offers a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. And after all is said and done, this is going to be the most comprehensive and detailed video you're ever going to see on YouTube about the 2015 Buick LaCrosse. Now, let's have some fun. What we have is another Buick, not my first. This is a Buick LaCrosse of 2015, and this was their last full-size luxury sedan, which they stopped making in 2019. A couple things about this video, I actually had to make some notes because there's so much to talk about. For one thing, I'm shooting this on my cell phone for the first time ever. And let's walk around the car. Ironically, this is the same color outside and inside of my last car, that Lincoln MKZ, that I love so much. And uh, I'm good with it. My front license plate. Always wanted one of those puppies. Finally got one. Now these fake vents over here are very typical Buick. Back in the 60s, if you had three vents, you had a V6 engine. If you had four, you had a V8. A little point of interest there. Uh, also, the first car I've had in a long time with the gas cap on the passenger side, not the driver's side. This car, for the first time ever for me, has a trunk release right inside here, if you have the key fob with you. Got a pretty good sized trunk. And by the way, here's a trunk release. And next to it there, where are we there? That's your backup camera. When you go in reverse, that thing kicks in. Well, there's a trunk, and I finally got my cargo net back. So happy about that. Now here are the front lights. Now these LEDs that are flashing on camera are the daytime running lights. In the middle is the halogen front light. And maybe these are the brights over here, I'm not even sure. And there are the bright lights over to the far left. And these go up really high. Now these door handles are unique. First of all, this is the first car I've had without needing a key to start it. It's got a push button ignition. But there is a place for a key right here if you need it. This button is kind of reminiscent of the old cars when you used to go like this to open them up. This will lock and unlock the car if the key fob was with me. 
Also, on the uh, outside mirror, this is a warning for your blind spot warning. So if a car is coming at you, this thing lights up in bright orange. And if it's really next to you, it starts to blink. And I'll show you this when I demo uh, the car when it actually is running. Now the windows in this car are pretty heavily tinted. There's the front windshield. You can see a difference. And the owner's manual says that's for the driver's privacy. I think it's also to keep out the hot sun. Now these window controls control the window unlike any other I've ever seen. In most cases, you know, you have the express down, push it once and it goes down. But if you want to stop it in, in motion, this is where it's unique. To stop it halfway, you push it down and push it down again and it'll stop. Just like that. I think same thing going up. Yeah, you pull it in the direction you're going or push it in the direction you're going and it'll stop. <laughs> kind of unique. Here's the engine, which is a V6. And I found out the VVT stands for variable valve timing. And apparently this succeeded the old bulletproof six cylinder 3800 engine that GM used for years and years and years. One thing I do like is there's a cap right here, a cover over the battery, which is kind of nice. Keeps the battery top, I guess, dry and safe from whatever. And let's show the interior while we still have some daylight left. Again, this is the exact same color as the interior was on my last car, that 2007 uh, Lincoln NKZ that I love so much. Uh, all leather, of course, that's what I like. Now, every video I've watched about this car on YouTube made a big deal about this center deal that comes down here and gives you two cup holders as well as a nice felt line storage area, which I don't know who's going to use that or whatever. But anyway, uh, these headrests also lay down because there's not a lot of, fi of field division right here through the, the rear window since this is what they used to call a fastback. So I've got these folded down. And, but wait, there's more. This clip here, push this clip and you have, guess what? More space in your trunk. Both of these seats fold down. So if you want to carry fishing poles or whatever, you just expanded your trunk space, which is awfully nice if you need that. We've got a nice Buick knee plate right there on the threshold. Over here are your standard seat controls to pull the seat up or push it back. They tilt the back up or down. And to the far right is your lumbar control. And I just found out shooting this video, I got a nice little tear right over there, which I'll have to fix at some point in time. And let's check out the front seat of the car. Let's open her up and check out this front seat again. All leather, which I like. Every video I've watched about this car made a big deal about all the stitching. There's lots of stitching in this car all over the place, which is kind of nice. Here's your driver's side door. Down here, your, what they used to call a map compartment. I found out this is here, so you can actually hold a water bottle here, which is kind of nice. Here's a remote trunk release. In my opinion, not the best place for it, but that's where they put it. And this does have a Bose stereo system and it sounds like it really nice love the wood grain here I always like wood grain on my cars you got a nice metal door handle lock and unlock here you have the seat memory for two people the back window lockout if you have rugrats in the back seat and here are the window controls and there's your remote mirror control Here's the front of the car. This is what you see when you get inside. Very high tech, which is what I wanted. <laughs> and one thing I noticed about Buicks, at least the ones I've owned, you see how the dashboard kind of curves into the door? They almost give you a cockpit kind of feeling, and I like it. The dashboard kind of ends at the door and just keeps on going. There are no right angles in the front of the car. This is all curved which is uniquely Buick. Um, there are three analog gauges in this car. On the left is your tachometer. On the right, the upper one is for your coolant temperature. The bottom one is the gas gauge. 
Another wrap steering wheel, which does heat in the winter. I'll show you how that works. Over here you have what is known as a center stack. The outer buttons on this car are optional. Because I have the Premium 2, the highest trim in this Buick LaCrosse line, uh, I have both of them. The left-hand button is for your lane departure warning. Lane departure warning icon on the instrument cluster display and the head-up display flash yellow. And if equipped, the safety alert seat left or right vibration pulses. The right-hand button is for your rear backup warning system and they can both be defeated. There's the center screen which we're going to talk about in great detail as this video progresses. It's an 8 inch touch screen with controls below which again I'll get to in detail. Down here it actually has single disc CD play which is kind of nice. Your heating controls are actually a weird mixture of touch screen on the left and right and actual buttons in the middle and again I'll show you how that works. Below that little area here which at one time was probably an ashtray and a cigarette lighter well now it's a little tiny storage area and a 12 volt accessory outlet. Down here is a shifter below that is more wood grain area which actually gives you two cup holders with these little indentations here, the little spring little things that actually come out and can accommodate different sizes of uh, cups or bottles or whatever. Over here is your parking brake, it's electric, pull up to activate, push down to disable, and over here is your traction control. Every video I've watched about this car has made a big deal about this center console armrest thing and how unique it is. There's a button over here, a kind of a wide button. Push this and this thing slides back and up, kind of on an angle. There's a track there as you can see and doesn't actually even open all the way but it's functional for what it does. We have a light inside as well as from the bottom to the top a USB port, a mini audio jack for uh, an external player and then another 12 volt accessory port as well. Also inside the center console is a little gully right down there. That's to hold the key fob. In case a battery in your key fob dies, you put the key fob inside this little uh, slot and the car will still be able to start. Very clever Buick. Over here on the left are your lighting controls and this this dial is very unique. The lights are off right now if you push it over once, you got parking lights, shut up. Push it over a second time, you get headlights. Now they're off. If you turn it to the left, it is actually spring-loaded like this. And this turns on your automatic headlights on or off. So they come on automatically when it's dusk. This is the old Twilight Sentinel back in the day. And the fog lights are activated by pushing this right here, up or down. Over here is your dimmer switch for how bright you want the lights on the interior of the car. And over here is the optional heads-up display, which I will show you in glaring detail later on in the video. Right below the light controls is a little storage area, a little deal that opens up here where you can put things. Over here are three buttons for OnStar if you want to subscribe to it, which I don't. Up here is a storage compartment for your sunglasses. Felt wine, kind of nice. And over here we have more controls. This is the famous passenger airbag on or off. Above that is a very unique three-way rocker switch for your interior lights. The way it's set now in the middle, uh, the lights operate normally. When you have this part pushed in, they don't operate at all. They will not turn on no matter what. If you put them to the far right, they're always on. So at least you have that option to control your interior lights. Over here is a switch to operate your rear sunshade. And I'm going to show you how that works from another video I shot. If you're driving east and the sun's setting in the west and the sunlight is coming through your back window, you hit this button and there goes your sunshade. Just block out the sun in your back window as you're driving away from the sun while it's setting, which is really nice. 
Up here are positioned for three garage door openers. That's also very common. And over here are your switches for your interior lights. Finally got a car with LEDs and they are bright. Over here the sun visor, no great shakes, has the usual mirror with lights. And years ago there used to be a switch to control the brightness of these lights in some cars, but not in this one. When I first looked at this car, I asked the salesman, considering this car has a push-button start, is there an accessories position which just turns on the electrical stuff? He said, yes. If you push this button once, you got this amber light, and of course, information. Car gives you lots of information, and your accessories will be on. The screens are on, and other things will work. To start the car, you've actually got to put your foot on the brake, and then push this button until it starts. And there you go. Got the warning lights in the mirror for your blind spot warning, which I'll talk about in great detail later on. Oh, well, that's interesting. A disc player error. Well, isn't that nice? Well, let's eject that disc and see what's happening with that. There we go. It's working. And now for a super in-depth look at the 2015 Buick LaCrosse. When you turn the car on, this is what you see. This beautiful dashboard. And by the way, this car has two 8-inch screens. That's one of them right in the middle. And the other is in the center stack. Another 8-inch screen with all your information that you ever want to need to know about this car. Um, so now things have come to life over here. On the left, you have your tack. In the middle, all the information you need about your driving and what's playing on your radio, your CD, whatever. On the right, we now have a voltmeter to show your battery voltage. And as I said, on the upper right is your coolant temperature, followed by your gas gauge. And over here on the bottom of the swirl, you're going to see a lot of warning lights. I showed you these two buttons before. Like I said, you can push them on or push them off. These are actual buttons. This is the center screen with eight icons. These are all factory that come with the car, and apparently you can move these around, delete them, add more. You can really customize it to death if you want. Over here you have one of two round dials, and these are actually click stops. They actually click. Get the radio off. The second one over here, and this does a lot of things too. This click has click stops, and you can see it's actually highlighting different icons, which I've never seen before. I'll learn more about this car as I'm doing this video. And this menu button pushes in and does certain things depending on which menu you're on. Like I said, lots of information. Um, Alright, we're going to do a really detailed video about this car beginning now. First, let me show you what the steering wheel does. It does a lot. This left side here is for mainly for your cruise control. This side here ties in with your dashboard and with the driver information systems as well as some other things which we'll talk about. Over here, um, this is obviously for your cruise, resume and set and all that. This button here turns the cruise off. This button here turns the cruise on and when you turn the cruise on get that little icon right there again it tells you something's happening i love it the button down here is for your heated steering wheel with the light telling you it's on and this steering wheel does get hot it's leather wrap which i like i actually preferred uh wooden steering wheels because they don't wear like leather wears but i tell you what right here and right here on both sides this steering wheel does get warm so let's turn that off and get rid of that up here is something unique. When you have the adaptive cruise control engaged on this car, if the car in front of you begins to slow down, this car will also slow down to match that speed. And up here you have a way of adjusting the gap of the car in front of you and you. You have near, far, or medium. In other words, when do you want this car to react to the car in front of you? So that's the cruise control. Two more buttons over here. This is to answer your phone. This is to hang up the phone, and when you push this button, this actually activates the audio in your car, and you can talk to the car, like this. 
Command, please. Navigation. What type of destination? Address. Say the address in Ohio, or say change state or change country. <laughs> I love it. Now this button here opens up a bunch of sub-menus on your display up here. Push it once you get this. You go to the top where you have info. Next you have audio. Then you have your phone. Then you have navigation. And then you have settings. So let's see what settings does. We hit the check mark, which is like an enter button. And you have all these different settings on this car. And what you're seeing is what they call the touring display. Now, if I want to change that, I push the right-hand button, and I get another sub-menu, which says touring. A lot of people like sport, which gives you an old-style round speedometer. And notice where it ends. 170 miles an hour. Really? Who's going to go that fast in any car? At some point, somebody did take this car out on the open road and try to see how fast it would go, and it stopped at 130. But I like the... Uh, the touring so we're going to go back to that because that's what i like what else do we have push the buttons down and you get this you get oh this is cool this is a speed warning this will let you know if you're going too fast and you can set this by pushing the enter button and then if you push the right hand arrow you can disable this or set the speed push the enter button and you can set your speed right there and what that means is when you hit that speed, the car is going to ding and tell you you're going too fast. How about that? So we have the speed warning. And we have a web, a web page you can go to where you're in U.S., not metric. And that's about it for the settings. Something else I just found out. If you're on these info pages here, where you are in the uh, settings mode, if you hit the right cursor again... You can list all the pages that you want to display when you're in these information settings. Just scroll up, scroll down. When you're done, go back to the middle and hit the check mark and you're through. Let's go up here to navigation. And this is really cool because this actually gives you a very small map <laughs> that is the same thing you're going to see on the GPS in your center screen. And this is just a cool thing to have. And when you're actually going a route that you preset, this will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. It is really, really cool. Going up to phone, <laughs> again, I have a phone connected. You push the right arrow, and you can see your recent calls, or you can see your contacts <laughs> right here on the center screen, which I think is really neat. So that's the phone. That's all it shows here. Moving up to audio, this shows you your audio source. And right now I'm playing a CD. You see a little CD icon there. Now, if I want to change the source, I hit the media button in the center stack. And it's going to go from CD to a flash drive I just plugged in. And let's see if I can, yeah. I think if I push the right button, yes, I can actually browse the files on this flash drive. It's showing me all the artists that are on this flash drive. I mean, this is a lot of information to take in while you're driving. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it's there if you want it. Here's all the songs on my flash drive. And there are a lot. It even picks out genres. And I have some air checks on this flash drive as well. There's WGCL from the 70s. How cool is that? All right, so that's your media. I'm going to hit the media button again. Okay, it's now changed to Bluetooth, and I'm streaming Wixie 1260 online on my phone, and this is the song that's playing. And, of course, it's got the Bluetooth icon right there. Let's see if I hit that right arrow, what it's going to do. Hmm. Let's see what this does. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right, what's the iPhone showing? Oh, it doesn't, I don't have Pandora, sorry. So Pandora is not going to work. Now it's showing right here that I can actually browse the files on the CD that's in my CD slot or what's on the flash drive, which is very interesting. 
Okay, still kind of messing around here with the audio settings. I have AM, FM, Sirius XM, Pandora, if I subscribe, my iPhone, or my CD. So now I'm playing a track from my CD. Hit the right arrow, and I can change it again. I can go back to my flash drive, which is called For Car. And this is what I'm playing. Okay, let's go to FM. And I'm using the up and down four-way cursor on the steering wheel to change channels. You can probably use the button below the screen to change channel. Oh, that's not working. And this is just scanning. I, I don't really have any favorites put in here yet because I don't listen to radio that much. So it's just scanning. So that's how the audio works. And by the way, here's something that's interesting. Let me show this. I'm going to play a song from my, my flash drive. All right, I'm going to turn the volume up on my steering wheel, which is right here. It's one of two metal buttons on this thing. Here's what's interesting. When I turn the volume up here, it says radio volume. If I use this volume control, it says audio volume. But here it's radio volume, which I think is interesting because I'm not using the radio. And by the way, when you're playing a song, get this down, this button here, which has like a power symbol, does not turn off the audio source. It mutes it. It just mutes it. Get a little speaker with the X, it mutes it. To stop the, to stop the audio from playing, we've actually got to hit this pause button right here. And you see there's a progress bar going along, show you how far in the track you are. Hit the pause button and it does stop. It turns into a play button, so now it's stopped. Okay, back to this screen and the submenus. You've seen the bottom four. Now information at the top, this is the old driver's information center, at least that's what I call it. There's all your information for trip A. I've gone 1,019 miles on this car in the two months I've had it, which for me is a lot of driving. Hit the down arrow, you get trip B. Next, you get your fuel range on this current tank of gas. Oil life. There's your tire pressure for all four tires. Then you get your fuel use, and to reset that, you hit the right button, and you can do a timer, reset it, reset. You can do all kinds of cool, cool things on this damn car. Down here is speed limit if you were actually driving. And that's really it. So those are the five submenus. Here's your turn signal lever, no great big deal. Has the same green arrows GM's been using for decades. To uh, activate the bright, you push it once, and there's your bright light icon. Push it again, the bright lights are off. On the opposite side, we have the windshield wiper and washer, and this is kind of cool. Uh, it's got uh, three positions. This is your delay, and you actually control the speed of the delay right here with these click stops. This is low, and then you have high. And back in the day, they used to have a, a position called Mist. Well, now since this is a modern car, it's called 1X, which means one time. Push it down one time, the wipers go one time. Now, this car wash on this thing is really cool. You push a lever forward to, do your, to wash your windshield, and it's got like a mist that covers the entire windshield. It's so cool, and it really works well. Now this car uses a lot of light blue and white. This is interesting. On the main dashboard display, you have the group in blue, the title in white. If you move over here, it's reversed. <laughs> the group is in white and the title is in blue. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. One thing I do like is the shifter. All these letters are in white, except for the actual gear that you're in, and that is in blue. And by the way, this MS is only available on this trim. 
This is actually a manual or sport mode. You can actually downshift and upshift the car by using the plus and minus buttons here on the shifter. Not all the Buick LaCrosse trims have this feature. It also changes the suspension so the car doesn't ride quite as smooth. It gives it a more sporty feel where you actually feel more of the road as you're driving. And again, when we shift, <laughs> this car gives you lots of information. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> as I mentioned, this area is a weird mixture of touchscreen and real buttons. On the left, you have obviously your temperature control up or down. Up here, you have heated seats over here, ventilated seats. This turns on the heat or the air, whatever you want to have, or even the vent if you want it. On this side, you have more buttons. You have a sync button, which obviously means you're going to sync up the passenger and the driver's side to have the same temperature control. Auto is your auto control. Why they put it there, I don't know. It even tells you you're an auto. I don't know why the air wants to come on all the time, but uh, let's get that auto off. So that shows you the heating and air conditioning controls, both digital and real buttons. Now one cool feature of this car that I like, it's called Easy Exit Seat. I'm going to hit the exit. So my seat's going back. Now when I shut the car off, the seat's going to go back by itself even further when I open the door. <laughs> Yep, this car has a lot of amenities. At this point in the video, we're going to look at this 8-inch touchscreen and what it shows in great detail. Here we go. The car comes with these eight icons as stock, and I guess you can uh, have more than these eight if you subscribe to, like, Pandora or OnStar or some other things. So let's go through these icons one by one and show what they do. Here's audio. And by the way, no matter what screen you're in, these three icons at the top are always here. And you can apparently customize these to your liking. You have audio, which is lit in orange, then phone, and then navigation. So it's showing you the song that's currently playing right now. And to go back to the source of this, and it's telling you right now that this is playing from a flash drive. There's a little picture of a flash drive. Press it where it says Browse. You can see the songs that are in the album. And you can actually browse these songs one of three ways. You can take this bar, like on a phone, and just scroll up or down. Or you can just use these arrows down here, up and down. Or you can take this knob right here, which is lit, and I love that blue. And you can turn this. It's got click stops. And you can turn it song by song. You play the song. You push the enter button and they'll start playing that song, which is cool. And by the way, I found this out only a few days ago. You see that little menu icon there? If I push this, this is the settings of your audio. This actually shows you the different audio settings that you have here, and these are really cool. To hit tone settings, you actually have your bass, mid-range, and treble, but what I just discovered a few days ago is there's more settings on the bottom here. These are sound fields, and these are really cool, especially to have, to have in a car. If you hit the first one, this is normal. And notice there's a little blue dot inside these things. That shows where the center of the sound field is going to be. You have normal, you have driver, and it actually does change the sound in the car. You have rear and you have center point, which makes everything in the center. And that's showing you up here also where the sound field is in the car. This is just too cool. And if you want to change your balance or your fader, you can obviously do it right from here as well. And you have some other settings here in audio, shuttle off and auto volume. I'm not really sure what that is, but there are different settings in auto volume. Go back. Go back, and again, it shows you what's playing. And you can actually access voice here and tell a car to play a song or to track back. This is how you shut off a sound source. There's no stop button. You have to hit the pause. 
You hit that, it becomes a play button, and nothing is playing. Next to that, you have your track forward and the menu, which brings up these settings again. So that's the audio settings. And by the way, we're in, I'm going to start playing something here. When you turn the volume control here, of course, it tells you that the audio is changing. This thing gets really loud. So down here we have two buttons for radio and media. I'm going to touch media. Now it changes to a CD. It's showing a song that's on a CD that's playing. I'm going to change media again. And it's going back to the flash drive. I don't have my iPhone with me, so it's not going to check out. It's not going to uh, detect the Bluetooth on my iPhone. Now, if you hit radio, which I rarely use. Hey, Johnny, why are you such a Grinch? Well, I'm not a Grinch. I'm saying I'm jealous. I want to do this. Yeah, and, of course, I over here, you're going to change your uh, your stations. And you say presets. Let's see. You just push this, and this will save it. There you go. That's how you preset a station. So you have, obviously, FM. You have Sirius XM, if you're a subscriber. And, of course, you also have AM as well. In case you're wondering, the slot for the CD is right here, and the eject for the CD is right there. It'll pop it right out, like that. I just connected my iPhone to the car, so now it's playing through Bluetooth, Wixie 1260 online, showing the title and the artist. Okay, let's check out the second icon for the phone. And for some reason, this thing is named my iPhone, iPhone 78. I don't know why. And again, the three icons up there at the top are still there. And this has various things at the bottom that you can uh, use with your phone. For example, you hit voice. Say a phone command. I don't want a phone command. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Then I have my contacts and my phone. And again, I can scroll up and down. Shows This shows my recent calls. Over here I have a keypad, if I want to make a call using a keypad in my car. Here's one for voicemail, which right now I'm not going to look at. And over here, the one that says phones, just shows you information about your phone. And notice in the upper right hand corner, it's showing the phone's battery level and reception. Let's go back to the main screen, so that's your phone. Navigation is really cool, and I'm going to take the car on the road and show how this works, this navigation. It's really, really cool, the way this thing works. You see on the bottom, you can zoom in, zoom out. Whoops. <laughs> there you go. Zoom in, zoom out, destination menu and all that. Let's see what menu does. Oh, there are some more choices. Very cool. Let's go back. One thing I like about um, this navigation system in this car is you get lots of options. One thing I like here is map view. You hit map view, and most of the time when you're in your car and you're using the GPS, your car is always facing north all the time. Well, you can change that. You can actually hit heading up view, and this will actually show the actual direction that your car is. Let's see how I can get back to that. Now that I zoomed up, you can see that Lake Erie is to my left, which is to the west, so we're not facing north anymore, which is kind of cool. And also what's cool is, it's still showing the song that's playing from my iPhone on Wixie 1260 online, which is kind of neat. One of the choices here is current location, and when you hit that, this is really cool. It shows you exactly where you are. <laughs> this is really, really nice. Let's go back again. This can show you traffic. 
all these different choices. I don't know who's going to go through all these menus while they're driving the car, to be really honest. But, uh, hey, they're here, they're here if you want to use them, right? It's also a 3D view. I wonder what that does. This is a 3D view. And I can see what this is doing. We still have zoom in, zoom out, and reset. Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. Here's something else that kind of blew my mind when I first got the car. You can actually change the look of the map. You have day mode or night mode. Now, this thing was set up into night mode when, when I first got the car. So, like, everything is black instead of white. Which is, I guess, the way the previous owner wanted it. So, that's what they had. But I'm going to go back into day mode the way I like it. There we go. Let's go to settings and see what this does, and it does a lot. Okay, there's the first page of settings, as it were. Let's go to time and date. Set the time. Let's see how we do that. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Easy enough. Up and down arrows. Set the date. Same thing. Language, you can imagine. The valet mode this is here. If you want to valet your car, you can set up a code in here so the valet can't do a thing with the car except probably move it. And obviously when you get the car back, you have to punch in the code and it exits the valet mode. Okay, radio settings. Manage favorites. There's so many things here, isn't there? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, scrolling down. Vehicle settings, and there are a ton of vehicle settings. Look at all this. Comfort and convenience. Auto fan speed. Low, medium, or high. Wow. Air quality sensor. Off, low, or high sensitivity. This is unbelievable for a car, isn't it? Auto defog, I have that on, that's kind of nice. When you get in the car and it's foggy, the auto, de auto defog will come on by itself. It's automatic, which is nice. Auto rear defog, same thing for the rear window. That's it for climate and air quality. Let's go back, collision detection systems. Alert type. You can have the car beep or just have the seat vibrate. I like the seat vibrating. Auto collision preparation. Off, alert, alert and brake. Again, your choice. You can really customize the hell out of this car. Rear cross traffic alert. Off or on. Go notifier. Off or on. Side blind zone alert. Absolutely, I want that on. And that's all for this category. Comfort and convenience. Auto memory recall. See all the different options you have here? <laughs> this is amazing, isn't it? Easy exit driver's seat. When you open the door, the seat goes all the way back as far as it can. I kind of like that. Chime volume, plus or minus, can make it louder or softer. Reverse tilt mirror, which I can't stand, I have it off. I don't like those mirrors going down to the ground when I'm in reverse. I don't, I never like that. Okay, next category, lighting. Vehicle locator lights. <laughs> yeah, I have that on. Exit lighting. This is how long you want the lights to stay on after you left the car. And that's lighting. Moving down. Power door locks. Look at this. <laughs> All these different choices. This is amazing. Auto door unlock, all doors, yeah, I like that. Delayed door lock, I have off. Remote lock, unlock, and start. 
<laughs> Look at all these. I don't think any video has ever showed all these choices until now. There's even more. Heat seats, passive door unlock. All doors or driver door. And this just goes on and on and on, obviously. Bluetooth. Look at this. It has ringtones. Oh, man. Oh, that just shows your ringtones from your phone. Voicemail numbers. Oh, here's my phone number. <laughs> Text message alerts. Obviously, I want those on. And there's more. Voice. Confidence threshold. Jeez. Confirm more, confirm less. Wow. Too cool. Prompt length, short or long. Audio playback, feedback speed, slow, medium, or fast. Really? Okay, that's voice. Display. Calibrate touch screen. I'm not going to touch, touch that at all. And turn display off. No, I want the display on. Rear camera. Guidance lines, I want them on. Rear park assist, I want those on. And return to factory settings. No thank you. So those are your settings. So okay, here's weather. And you have, obviously, choices down here. Hourly, 36-hour daily. If you hit menu, advisories. No advisories. Okay. Configure weather alerts. Oh, wow, look at all this stuff. <laughs> Again, so many choices. Wow, nice. Nice. And map legend. I've seen that before somewhere. Nice. So that's basically what your weather does. Now let's go back to the last one that I can do on this car, and that's text. I don't have OnStar. Well, there's text that were uh, <laughs> sent to me earlier tonight. Let's go into settings, see what that does for text. Text alerts on. Manage predefined messages, which... Add new. You can figure out what these are. And that's what it looks like. Now when the car's in motion, this will not show up. You'll get a blank screen. When the car stopped or shut off, the screen reappears. And of course, the car can talk to you if you want. Merry Christmas to you. Hey, what time does the floor show start? <laughs> that is just too cool. We're now going to focus in great depth on the heads-up display. The two controls for the heads-up display are right next to the dimmer switch for the interior lights. The left one that says HUD with up and down arrows, that moves the display up or down on your windshield and you can actually move it all the way to the bottom and it disappears. The right one is the biggie. That's where it changes what you see. And here we go with the different displays. Let me show you how this can be moved up or down the windshield. I just moved it off <laughs> and I'm moving it up doesn't have a really big range but uh, I guess that's where I like it all right I'm gonna twist the dial and I guess you have to push it and show you the different settings this is showing you a song playing from my cell phone uh, from Bluetooth into the car push it again we have the direction the compass Push it again, you get a tack. Push it again, you get nothing except the miles per hour. And that's really it. You've got brightness control here also. 
If you turn this dial all the way to the right, it gets pretty darn bright. And to the left, it almost disappears. In fact, it does disappear. Now, when you're using your GPS, you'll also see turns uh, visible here on the heads-up display. I'm going to try to show that later on in the video. And by the way, this is showing what the turn signals look like on the outside mirror. And I finally got a car that can do this. And I love it. Okay, I'm going to attempt to create a new route in my GPS by talking to the car and show what it looks like as I travel. Hopefully, there won't be too much camera shake because I am doing this on my cell phone. So let's start with the voice command. Command, please. Navigation. What type of destination? Address. Say the address in Ohio, or say change state or change country. One, two, two, two. Bellrose Road, Mayfield Heights, Ohio. One, two, 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 Bellrose Road, correct? Yes. Complete your selection from the radio display. One, two, 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 Bellrose Road, Mayfield Heights, Ohio. And now we've got it here. So we push go. Let's push go again. The route calculation is complete. Please proceed to the nearest road. And here we go. I want to show you guys how this looks on my display. This is really, really cool. Turn right after a quarter of a mile. What's really cool is it's also showing on my heads up display. Turn right after 600 feet onto West Laura Drive. Now see that line on the left? As that line shrinks, that means I'm approaching that turn I have to make. This, I didn't know about this line. This is very unique. When that line's gone, that's when I make the turn. The next right, then make the next right turn. Bingo. Too cool. <laughs> it even shows you how far away you are. Please turn next right. And there's that same line that's going to disappear right about now. <laughs> Isn't that neat or what? Turn left after 500 feet onto Eric Drive. I don't know why it's taking me this way, but I'm going to go up to a traffic light, so I'm going to ignore this. But this is what the navigation looks like when you're in the nav Please mode. turn next left. In your speedometer. So I missed Eric Drive, so now it's going to obviously recompute. Turn left after a quarter of a mile. And of course, here's your main screen showing you everything. Now my heads up display is showing me both the car in front of me warning and the lane assist warning at the same time. Now that we're driving, you can see the heads up display is showing the direction I'm going, the miles per hour, and that lane departure warning is also showing there. Let's see what happens if I go over to the left too much. Oh, it blinked. How about that? <laughs> well, I guess that means it's working.
Something else I found out about the GPS, and this is really cool. You see this up here? That's your estimated time of arrival. Push this once, you get the length of your journey. Push it again, and it tells you how many miles away. <laughs> like I said, lots of information in this car. This is the interior of the car at night. This thing has ambient lighting all over the place. This is by the door handle. And I actually have, you can't see it too well. There it is. I love this one. This is a blue light, a thin blue light going around the entire curvature of the dash, which does not coming out too well on this camera, but believe me, it's there. There's the ambient lighting there. You actually have ambient lighting inside the cup holders. And you actually have a little bit of light inside the CD player as well. This is absolutely just beautiful at night. It's cool the way the uh, compass kind of slides as I change direction. <laughs> 